Hi, welcome to another edition of Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're going to be talking about cellular IoT, LTM, and narrowband IoT. Hi, Ravinder, would you like to say hello? Hi, everybody. My name is Ravindra Singh, and I'm working as a product manager for uh, um, RF modules in uh, Burth Electronic ISOs based out in Munich, Germany. Great. Thanks for joining us today, Ravinda. So could you just tell me a little bit about why LTM and narrowband IoT are considered essentials for industrial communications? That's a very important question. And uh, main requirements for industrial communications are uh, low power consumption, enhance the indoor coverage, uh, transmission of a small chunk of data, lower complex solutions with lower cost. So the legacy cellular technologies such as uh, 2G, 3G, and 4G were not designed for low power uh, wide area network or LPVN applications. So 3GPP came up uh, in release 13 with two new technologies, LTKTM and NB-IoT uh, for LP1 or the IoT applications connectivity. So LTM and NB-IoT technologies are optimized for power consumption they have uh, much better indoor coverage and of course at cheaper price. So global coverage and roaming of cellular networks, uh, these are uh, standardized technologies and these are a couple of advantages for LTM and NV-IoT and they make perfect fit for the industrial communication. So in yeah. broader level, if you'll see the difference between LTM and, and NV-IoT, uh, LTM, has the bandwidth of uh, 1.08 megawatt, uh, 08 megahertz, while NVIOT is 180 kilowatts. Since uh, LTM has uh, less, um, LTM has the more bandwidth, it offers higher data rates, such as for uh, uh, uplink, uh, maximum uplink data rate is 1 Mbps, while uh, maximum downlink uh, data rate is 588 kbps. NVIOT, other hand, since it has the lower bandwidth, it offers only uh, lower data rates, 158 kbps in uplink and 127 kbps in downlink. In terms of latency, since LTM has higher bandwidth and higher data rates, they offer the low latency, while the NVIOT has the uh, higher latency. So these are yeah. a couple of main uh, differences between NVIOT and uh, KTM. Okay, so in that in that case, would um, MBIOT be suited more to data that's needed every once in a while rather than key critical data, for example? Exactly. So where, you know, most of the time your device is sleeping, only once in a while it wakes up and sends some data and again it goes uh, to sleep. So that kind of applications, uh, NBIOT is uh, much better than CATM because it uh, consumes less power also. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So we're talking about obviously um, the smart factory and industry 4.0, but where else are we seeing these uh, technologies being used? So there are two parts to answer this question. One is that uh, IoT applications, uh, which demands, you know, small to medium data rates, uh, which can be fulfilled with the LT, CATM and NV IoT technologies. Some examples are smart city, smart homes, metering, asset tracking, consumer electronics, healthcare, and wearables. While the yeah. other type of applications, you know, which demands higher data rate with voice requirements, they can be fulfilled with the LT higher CAT, such as, you know, uh, LT CAT 4, CAT 12, CAT 1. So some examples are vehicle telematics, autonomous driving, uh, immersive gaming, and, you know, virtual reality, yeah. Right, okay. So, yeah, I, I understand um, a, a couple of those uh, areas where you, you're saying that they're, they're being more widely used, and, and one of the areas um, for asset tracking is, is very important. So, essentially, you know, you, you can be using a combination of everything to asset track maybe from either assembly and production through to production and delivery. So yes, yeah, thanks for that. The Just want to come back to the question on the operators around um, 2G and 3G. Um, you mentioned about 
those being the, the, the legacy, why are they actually being phased out? And, and what does that look like on a worldwide basis? Okay. So this is true that uh, 2G and 3G are being shutting down. And there are uh, various reasons for phasing out 2G and 3G. So I will give a couple of uh, main reasons. One is the evaluation of new technologies. So in terms of performance, 4G and 5G solutions uh, represent an improvement over the performance in terms of coverage, power consumption, bandwidth, uh, latency, and reliability. 2G and 3G were not designed for uh, low power wide area network applications. So 2G and 3G does not fit for the uh, battery powered IoT devices. The second right. reason why it's phasing out is efficient utilization of you know, frequency spectrum. So wherever uh, you have 2G and 3G are phasing out, they will be replaced uh, uh, by far more capable technologies in terms of bandwidth, throughput, latency, reliability, and power demand. So to deploy more efficient technologies, 2G and uh, 3G needs to be sunset. And third reason is demand for new technologies. So demand for new technologies such as, uh, you know, LTM, NVIOT, and 5G is going up. While for 2G and 3G, either the connections are uh, going down or they are very stagnant. So it is not right. a business case for network operators to maintain, you know, 2G and 3G networks. So if we'll see uh, the worldwide 2G and 3G uh, phase out plan, let's say in Europe, Deutsche Telekom has already shut down 3G networks. And Swisscom in Switzerland has already switched off 2G networks. And Vodafone and Telia have already announced that uh, they will not have the uh, coverage for uh, 2G and 3G beyond 2025 onwards. Same cases with the US, where Verizon and T-Mobile has already decided to switch off 2G and 3G. And similar cases with the Asia, uh, where Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, Singapore, and you know Thailand have already switched off 2G and 3G technologies. Okay. So we were talking earlier just about the, the, the difference between LTM and narrowband IoT. If we were then to factor in 4G and 5G, will what will LTM bring, bring to that equation? What, what's the sort of difference between those, those technologies? Okay. So, you know, uh, since 2G and 3G networks are already setting down in my opinion this is the high you know time for iot device manufacturers to start looking into beyond 2g and 3g connectivity solution so and uh, ltm and NVIOT, both are 5g ready technologies and are the part of 5g development uh, uh, to fulfill one of the important uh, use case uh, which is massive machine type communication or mmtc so the applications which requiring you know uh, low power wide area network connectivity or the iot connectivity kind of uh, uh, um, applications they will be perfectly served by 5g ready ltm and nviot while the applications you know with the higher data rate and voice requirements uh, 4g cat m cat 1 or sorry cat 4 or cat 12 are and 5g are suitable so it is safe to assume that 4G and 5G are you know ready to be deployed and that it will not be phased out in foreseeable future at least. Yeah. So one of the things that we we, we see quite a lot when we're we're either researching uh, Industry 4.0 or the Smart Factory, and even some some on the the consumer side, you know, with consumer goods around connectivity, all the noise seems to be around 5G at the moment. But LTM does have a significant growth opportunity in this area. So what is it that you guys at Worth have that our customers can look at or to develop LTM application? Okay. Yeah, there's lots of uh, noise and talks about 5G. So let me first explain. 5G mainly covers three different use cases. First is uh, EMBB or you can say is enhanced mobile, mobile broadband which has mainly three requirements in broader level, like higher bandwidth, higher cost, and higher mobility. The second uh, uh, use case is the URLLC, or the ultra-reliable low-latency communication. 
So here the main requirements are ultra low latency, high reliable and highly secure communication. Then third, an important requirement is MMTC, massive machine type communication, uh, which mm -hmm. has the requirements such as uh, high device density per basis station of per cell, low bandwidth and low cost. So high speed uh, LT such as, you know, LT Cat 4, LT Cat 12, etc. will fulfill uh, two of the use cases, EMBB and URLLC. While LTM and NVIOT connections will grow uh, to fulfill one of the main 5G use case, MMTC or the massive machine type communication. So Burth Electronic offers its uh, first cellular module and its name is Adastria 1. And this module supports both LTM and NB-IoT. So this has the advantage with the dual mode because if in some countries, let's say you does not have the coverage for NB-IoT, you can configure this module for LTM and the vice yeah. versa. Yeah. And right. uh, this module comes with the integrated GNSS, uh, which supports uh, GPS and GLONASS satellite systems. So it is perfect for the asset tracking kind of applications. You do not need uh, the uh, extra GNSS because it is already integrated. And at the C1 module has integrated uh, uh, Cortex M4 MCU uh, with the 1 MB of flash and 256 of KV RAM. And this MCU is exclusively for customers application development. So this is not shared between modem and the application. This is exclusively only for user application developments. Right. Okay. So that's quite a comprehensive yeah. um, evaluation kit there as well. So, okay, we, we can put links to that uh, below this this video. The the other thing I just wanted to talk about, and I think you you've already answered a lot of these points already. But if somebody was considering cellular IoT, what is it they need to take into consideration? You mentioned things like data rates and, and latency, for example. If you were to give maybe a key couple of points that you need to consider before you, you take this step? This is a very interesting question. Uh, so here, actually, that uh, optimal uh, technology choice will always uh, depends on use case specific constraint for, of course, and uh, the customer should consider many factors and he should answer like, what are the applications demand in terms of data rate? because cellular technologies offer from lower data rate to medium data rate to up to higher data rates. What yeah. are the applications demand in terms of latency? Where will it be deployed? Where, whether this technology has the coverage on that country or region or not? What are the requirements in terms of roaming across the networks? What are the certification requirements and certification cost? Because cellular certification is quite complex and it's costly. Is the application mobile or stationary? So these are all questions need to be answered when deciding whether to migrate IoT applications uh, uh, from legacy 2G, 3G networks to 4G or 5G technologies. So yeah. my advice is uh, uh, applications which are requiring low power wide area network connectivity will be perfectly served by uh, 5G ready LT, CATM and NVIOT while the applications with the higher data rate and voice requirements, uh, 4G CAT1 or CAT4 or CAT12 and 5G are suitable. Okay. So, yeah, there's, um, the consideration that you've, you've gone through, you did mention one there which um, sticks out to me is uh, cellular certification. What is it that you guys at Worth can, can help with um, customers if they want to look, look into that area? Okay. So, first, uh, uh, let me explain this uh, cellular certification process in case of, uh, you know, uh, chipset level or the module level or the device level. There are three different types of certifications which are required for cellular connectivity. One is regulatory certifications such as uh, CE, FCC, IC. This is, you know, uh, main requirement for any country and it is required for any kind of RF device or the solution which you want to sell in the country. The second type of certification is the industry specific certification. These are mainly the GCF, which is main requirement in Europe and other, uh, other part of the world, while the PTCRV is the main requirement for the network operators in USA. 
and third type of uh, uh, certification is mobile operator specific certifications such as you know Deutsche Telekom, Vodafone, AT&T and so on. So all these three uh, certifications are quite complex as well as uh, you know you have, they need lots of uh, investments also. So yeah. what we have done is that we have very strong partnership with the Deutsche Telekom and our cellular module address tier one is already certified from Deutsche Telekom. So pre-certified by Deutsche Telekom address tier module uh, enables a quick integration to end product without additional certifications such as uh, industry specific certification GCF and operator specific uh, certification. Uh, whenever Deutsche Telekom IoT uh, SIM cards are used. So in that case, yeah. customer can save lots of money and time. And other good thing is that Deutsche Telekom has roaming partners in different countries. So where Deutsche Telekom does not uh, have the direct coverage, uh, the coverage will be provided uh, through these roaming partners. For example, in uh, UK, Deutsche Telekom has the roaming agreement with the Vodafone. So the yeah. coverage will be provided by the Vodafone. Okay. So yeah, that's really important information on there as well. And also, you know, pre-certification, having that that legwork essentially already done for you will, will help you bring things to market a lot quicker and uh, obviously get your, your facility up and running for it, for example. Ravinda, this is such a, a fascinating subject. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we could we could talk for hours on LTM and narrowband IoT, cellular IoT. There are so many things to understand about this technology, but we do know that it's gathering pace and obviously worth electronic, have lots of information around this as well. So we'll put a link to your, your website. And I really do thank you for your time today joining DesignSpark and I hope we can talk again real soon. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for sure. Yeah.